Greetings, my name is Vincent, and welcome to another episode. Let's rock here at Bunker 6. Thank you for joining me, and this is a very special episode for me because this is my first attempt at doing a terrain video. And as the title of this video suggests, we're going to be trying to make some realistic looking rocks. Now, there are a few things that you're going to need that you're not necessarily going to have to hand. For example, some rock molds. I'm using Woodland Scenics rock molds and they're fantastic. Now, this all depends on how handy you are, but you could in fact make your own molds and you'd do that by buying a lump of coal, breaking it up a little bit, and you can actually use the exposed surface of the broken charcoal to make molds that look just like this. All you have to do is cover it in silicone and then the results of that will create a very similar effect to these Woodland Scenic molds. Now, of course, you're going to need plaster for these plaster molds. You're going to need a pot to mix the plaster in, a spatula or a stick to mix up the said plaster with some water, and let's begin. So I will say this, seems I'm pretty new to plaster, I'd say less is more when it comes to adding water. I put the plaster powder in first and then add a small amount of water as you go along because if you add too much water adding plaster back in it just is more complicated and way more dusty it's better to just have the powder in the bottom of the pot and then just start chipping away at how much water you think works now plaster is an incredible material it will dry even if it's very watery or very thick sometimes you want to add a bit more water than i've added here but because i was filming i didn't want to have to deal with a very watery plaster mixture so this paste was a little bit easier to manage while doing the filming of this episode now on to the rock molds themselves and as you can see this is a small set that I have I'll have links in the description for you to be able to buy your own now I have a pot of sand that I'm going to sit this rock mold into it keeps it stable while it's drying this is very important especially if the plaster is a watery mixture because if you look at the underside of these molds there's nothing really stable about them so you want to be able to sit them in something so they can stay flat during the drying and curing process now one thing that is not shown in the video but is highly recommended is to wet the inside of the molds first it just helps with getting the plaster back out of the mold once everything is dry now plaster would dry quicker if it wasn't in a plastic mold like it is here so i would leave it overnight so you're fully sure that it is completely dry before you pop it out because if you pop out a piece of plaster before it's fully dry it can break and some of these molds have quite thin sections and if you put your thumb pressure too hard in a certain area it will split the mold in a certain place and that can be quite frustrating especially if you wanted one continuous piece now that first little piece of mold that I pushed out was just the excess plaster that I had left over. I didn't want to have to make more just for that one specific mold. And as you can see, it still came out pretty good. Now, some of these rock molds have way more definition than others. So we're actually going to be using a different mold when it comes to our painting tutorial. But I just wanted to show you the process of making these rocks to start with. And what you really want to do is just take your time, push from underneath the mold upwards, and hopefully it'll all come out in one piece. Now we're on to painting, and one thing I will say is, do this as cheaply as you possibly can. The cheapest paints and the cheapest brushes you can find will suffice. You do not need to use any of your expensive modeling paints or paint brushes to do this project. The first stage of painting is adding our gray base coat. Gray, obviously, because we're painting rocks. Now you can do other things such as a desert tone with a sort of burnt umber and tan finish instead if you want, but I'm doing rocks that look like they come from the Scottish Highlands or something like that. Now I'm going to be creating a black wash here, which is just very, very thin down acrylic poster paint. Nothing crazy here. Don't use any of your Nuln Oil or Agrax Earthshade because this will get very expensive very quickly. This will suffice, and I'm using purified water, but you can use any water you want to thin the paint. It's just I had purified water to hand at the time. Also, bear in mind that this wash will be going on thick and fast, and you might need to do two coats because of the low pigment count. Now these brown and tan tones are my secret weapon to making rocks feel super realistic. Now it might seem quite extreme close up, but when the rock is at a distance on a war table, I think the effect's quite nice. These brown and tan colors take the eye away from the monotonous gray and gives a bit more visual interest to an otherwise quite mundane object. Now not all rocks have a uniform finish to them, of course, because they're rocks. So you're gonna have different types of rocks and you're going to have sediments and dirt and things like that from thousands of years of erosion 
also on the surface of these rocks. So this variation, I think, helps trick the eye. And to make things feel a little bit more uniform, with washing and highlighting, these brownie tones should sit back a little bit and be a little less intense. We're also going to be adding a mossy green wash in places to imply that there's algae or moss sitting on the surface of the rocks too, to bring a bit more life to them. Now the wash has done a great job here, it's added definition and contrast to all the nooks and crannies, but also acts as a filter to dumb down a little bit those browns that we added in the earlier step. Now I know I've been saying not to use your expensive paints or brushes, but I'll make an exception when it comes to this moss effect. I'm using some GW wash here, which is an excellent color for implying moss is sitting on the surface of a rock. Much better than I could create with a homemade mixture of my own. Now I'm just finding points of interest where I'd want the moss to sit. Obviously think about it logically, where would moss be growing? More likely in corners of the rock rather than in big flat surfaces, but you can go more extreme with it or less extreme with it. Just don't go overboard because you don't want to end up with a big green rock. Once the mossy green wash is dry, we're going to move on to our final stages of dry brushing. Dry brushing is an excellent effect when it comes to making rocks pop and making them look very weathered and very realistic. In these next few dry brush stages, we're going to start from a dark gray and work our way up to a chalky white. Now, obviously real rocks don't have chalky white highlights or anything like that, but when you're on the tabletop, you want things to stand out. So I think the additional highlights that are coming make things a bit more rewarding visually in the end. And as we're getting brighter with our highlights, we're also becoming more focused in the areas that we highlight. The first gray that we did was to create an additional uniform layer to just try and bring those browns down a little bit. But the lighter grays that we're doing are really trying to enhance areas rather than just create uniformity. One thing to also note is I'm changing my painting technique here too. I'm no longer scraping like I was for the dry brushing, but instead doing some actual dabs, almost painting the brighter sections onto this rock surface. Please also bear in mind that you will want to wipe off the excess paint from your brush because if you do press too hard, you don't want those bristles to show up on the rock. It looks very obvious and very unrealistic. Now, apologies to any of my viewers outside of the United States. I'm not sure where you will get this paint from, but this is a chalky white paint. It's quite thick and it is an off-white. It's almost like a cream. And I prefer a cream finish rather than a white finish when it comes to these final accentuated dry brush sections because brilliant white just looks a little bit too unrealistic. Whereas this creamy white just seems to strike a better chord with me. If you can't find this paint, I recommend just finding any kind of white and then mixing a bit of yellow in and making it sort of sticky rather than too wet and then just adding this final dry brush stage like you're seeing that I'm doing here. Now, of course, you could stop at this point and be very happy, but I decided that I wanted to add a bit more black back into the rock section again because I didn't like how uniform this dry brush was. So I found some specific areas that I wanted to be darker and I put the black paint there. The black paint came straight out of the bottle without any watering down or anything like that, and that's because it is a cheap low pigment count paint, which is great. It's almost like a glaze at this point. Because it has such low pigment, you can put it straight on the model out of the bottle, and you can see you've got to do quite a few layers before you get the kind of dark color that you're looking for, which is very useful because you don't want to make mistakes at this point. Another benefit of this particular cheap Liquitex paint is the fact that you can almost move it around too. It's almost like a gel at this stage when you haven't watered it down, which is also very useful. So if you're not happy with it, you can always push the paint around just to get it to exactly the right points that you want. And you can keep on pushing paint into certain areas to really start accentuating the areas that you want to add depth to. And the absolute final stage here is going to be using the excess paint from the brush to scrape across areas that we think are still too bright. We have got black paint on our brush and we're going to be using that black paint to just dull down some of the most extreme areas of dry brushing from earlier. That'll hopefully make the rock feel more realistic. And at this stage, I feel the rock is complete. This will look great on my battlefield or as part of a backdrop for any of my photo shoots of my little tiny figurines. Well, there we have it, some realistic rocks. There's many different ways that you can paint rocks like this, but this is the method that I like the most. I hope you enjoyed the episode, and until next time, I've been Vincent, signing off from here at Bunker 6. Okay.